what is going on, guys? Good evening, good evening. It's your favorite Maury Zunder, Abdel Kuatmi. I hope you guys are having a blessed uh, day. hope everybody had a blessed Easter. Uh, we are going to crank right into uh, what is happening in the market, uh, what more or less transitioned last uh, week, what's the expectations this week. We have the employment data week this week, so we're going to start seeing a lot of different transitions in regards to the market. What's the expectations most importantly? What are we expecting this week? Today was a little bit of a shift. We got some employment data week that came out that we're expecting, but today we got two different reports that actually caused interest rates to really jump up, right? So if we kind of take here, and I'm going to show here, Mortgage News Daily is the trusted resource I always like to utilize when we're looking at rates. And if we take a look at where they kind of transition today, we kind of shifted, unfortunately, a little on the lower side uh, where rates almost jumped up 0.14%. We've been pretty flat, as I usually like to tell my clients, really over the last couple of um, two weeks. We've been relatively flat where the interest rates started off at roughly just just under seven, uh, just over 7%. Then we trickled down to 6.9, then we're now kind of trickling back a little on the on the higher side. What are the expectations? What is causing this little fluctuation in the market? Two different things that came out today in the beginning was the ISM data. That is specific economic data that comes out specifically with stocks with the S&P. That showed a little bit of fluctuation, which started having a lot of people selling those stocks and selling those bonds, right? So that is something that we really wanted to keep an eye out for. And it kind of came a little bit of a curveball kind of erasing some of the positive big drops that we saw because last week we got some healthy inflation data that came in that brought rates down. And then now we've been really for the last two weeks really teetering into anywhere from that. So we're kind of dealing with rates right now just slowly creeping up past 7%, which is expected. Now, what happened last week? Last week, we got a lot of the PCE report, personal consumption expenditure report, and that actually came in relatively flat. If we kind of see where we've been at, we're kind of roughly at the headline number of 2.5% with the core year-to-date number at 2.8%. Remember, the Federal Reserve has consistently come out and told us that they want to hit that 2% target rate of where we want to be. So we're going to keep an eye on that stuff because, again, we're transitioning into the spring and summer market. We're now into April. We're cranking right into it. There are a lot of buyers that are out there, guys, and there's in industry is consistently getting busier. More inventory is starting to come on the market. We're starting to see a lot more fluctuation, most importantly, with the client's offers. It's all about your strategies for the offers accepted. So again, we like I said, the Federal Reserve, I've said this numerous times before, they hiked interest rate 11 times since March of 2022, the highest that it necessarily ever got to. What does this basically mean? This is going to be super, super crucial. We need to hit that interest rate of 2% when it comes to inflation specifically. Inflation is going to be the driving force for a lot of us to see a sharp transition. The Fed did come out and say that even if we don't get close to 2%, there's still a potential chance of them hiking. I'm um, sorry, of them cutting. Hiking is definitely not something we want. Of them actually cutting rates. And if they do go ahead and actually cut interest rates, we're going to start seeing, obviously, a, a direct multiple sound shift in regards to mortgage rates as well, right? We also saw some new home sale data. So last week we got updated new home sale data. Again, we're at still about an 8.4 month supply of homes. That is obviously a biggest transition that we have to face when we are going through the market and going through some of the different transitions of what we want to look at. In addition, again, you guys will see now, of course, the media does a terrible job of creating uh, animosity. But the most important thing that they will point out is that there's a decline in home values, which is about three and a half percent, about seven percent last year. But again, a median home price doesn't mean that prices of homes are going down. That just means that some homes are being sold at necessarily a little bit of a cheaper price because of the number of price cuts that we saw from builders, the number of different fluctuations in terms of the inventory. So it's all about looking at things from a big picture perspective when we talk about those items, right? And then we also saw an increase in regards to new signed contracts. This actually caught us by surprise, to be honest, when we started seeing almost a 75.6. So again, 2021, obviously we know is almost 115. 2022 was 91, 76 and a half. We're still again on the rise when it comes to new contracts. So yes, even if interest rates are remaining sticky, 
like we basically saw. And if I actually go back to this draft, and I love showing this to our clients, uh, if we look at January 1st, 2024, we're literally basically for the last, I would say since February, bouncing anywhere from 6.87 for the last three months, bouncing anywhere from 6.87 to the 7% of where we've been at. The market really just doesn't know how are we going to break that ceiling, right? And the two major factors that we're going to consistently always keep hearing from is going to be inflation and employment. I have literally talked about this consistently with our clients from the time before into currently right now. What are going to be the major market fluctuations that we're going to see that's going to impact the direct impact, right? Uh, then we saw, obviously, home price appreciation. Guys, values of homes are still going up nationally. And we're talking on a national level, we're still seeing almost a half an increase and almost a 6% year over year increase. So I tell this to a lot of my clients when we're placing a lot of different scenarios with what their offers should be 10% down, 15% down, 5% down, everybody's afraid of this PMI thing. And I'm like, yo, it's not that big of an impact. Sure, your monthly payment is going to be slightly higher, but you could literally get your mortgage insurance removed from your home, putting things in perspective in 2021, I purchased one of my properties down here where I moved and we live in now. I have called the bank six months ago and actually called them to send an appraiser out. They sent an appraiser out. They redid the assessment of my house and we were already over 25% of equity. I only put 5% down when we purchased the home and they removed mortgage insurance. I did not have to spend the extra 15%, which would have cost me an additional almost $200,000 into the value of the house, right? So again, it's the gold standard for appreciation when it comes to the FHFA, and we're still constantly seeing that increase in terms of values. Now, jobless claims, of course, what we're going to constantly see when it comes to this, remember, we need to monitor this stuff. We need to keep an eye on interest rates specifically and how many people are potentially losing their jobs, right? If the unemployment market turns, that is when the Federal Reserve said that they were going to consistently go and cut their federal funds rate. So we want to truly keep an eye on that stuff, because if the unemployment rate still continues to remain strong and inflation still remains sticky, we're still going to see interest rates consistently stay anywhere from 6.75 to 7 percent. Right. And that's really the trend like we just looked at for the last three months of what we've been looking at in terms of stuff. Right. Uh, again, this week, as I always tell people, this is the employment data week. I'm going to shoot a video later on where we'll go through that. But what does that mean? We're going to start getting updated reports. Tuesday, we're going to get what's called the JOLT report, which is job opening and labor turnovers. How many new jobs are being created, new openings? And then we're going to get the ADP report, which usually measures private payroll, right? So we're going to keep an eye on that. How many private new jobs from the uh, white collar sector generally are being created? And then we're going to also look at the consistency of the uh, jobs claims. The trickiest part, the one that has truly thrown a curveball is usually on Friday. That is the BLS report. I call it the BS report because every single damn month, they're constantly coming out with these outrageous numbers of new jobs being created. And then the next following month, they're revising it by a lot. Um, so we're going to truly keep an eye on those fluctuations within that again, guys. So yes, interest rates are still remaining a little sticky, right? Today was definitely not necessarily the day we really wanted as we were slowly consistently staying under the 7%. We took a little bit of a transition, as you guys can see here. Now, if we were to even go back, you know, we're basically literally close to where we were about what's that? A little, little oh, under a year ago, right? So it's going to be interesting to see again the fluctuation. You guys will see. At one point, we went really, really high, which we know was around the September, and then on October. This is when we started seeing the downshift because this is when we actually started seeing some healthy data. And we've been consistently kind of bouncing between that. Okay, guys. So I'll keep you guys updated as always. I appreciate you guys jumping on. Any questions that you guys have, always please feel free to reach out to my team and I, gotmortgages.com, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great night.